Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. I want to start this video off with prices for the Intel 12th generation processors, aka Alder Lake, because various retailer prices from Europe have actually leaked online. Credit to Momomo for actually uh, publishing and compiling all of these prices into an easy to read format. Now, the bottom line is that Alder Lake's 12900K will apparently be more expensive than the 11900K, but not by a huge amount. I will be reading these prices as the average with that because, well, I just think it makes sense. Although, of course, um, tax in your particular region will vary. And there is a possibility that these prices could be cheaper or more expensive when the CPUs launch. So the 12900K has eight high performance cores and eight energy efficient cores. We've discussed the specs of these CPUs quite a number of times before, but the 12900K is going to be an average of around 700 euros. I wanna stress again, euros. The KF variant, meanwhile, is about 30 euros cheaper. So this is basically the same processor, albeit with the iGPU disabled. Personally, and I stress the word personally, I would rather have the variant which it does have the iGPU enabled because I think it can be rather useful for things like fault diagnosing and just, you know, it, lots of stuff to be honest with you. But of course, if you're trying to save a few bucks or there's shortages, then, well, naturally that could be a way to go. The 12700K, meanwhile, is about 500 euros. Again, I want to stress this is with tax. Now, the 12700 has eight high performance cores and four energy efficient cores. I'll be very curious to see how well this overclocks and what difference the 12700 and the 900 actually have in, let's say, games. I suspect that they're going to be quite close to one another, but I say this with tons of ignorance because at the end of the day these products as of the time i'm recording this well, they've just not launched however for around 200 uh, euros saving that's quite a bit but there are a lot of rumors now of course as to the specifications of these chips not only in terms of the big dot little um, architecture but also the clock frequency allegedly we will have a five gigahertz boost for all cores for the 12900 but the 12700 will only have 4.7. It'll be very interesting to see how this turns out in terms of overclocking. Finally, um, the 12600K is the last SKU that I wanna discuss. It has six high performance cores and four energy efficient cores. And according to the price that we're seeing here, it's gonna be about 350 euros, which is actually pretty darn good, at least in my opinion. I will also say that back in January, Harakaze 5719 actually leaked a bunch of prices as well. So yeah, full credit to them. Their prices were pretty darn close to this. So it does look like Intel have kind of been circling these price points for a while. Now, this basically means that Intel are going to be pricing some of its SKUs, like the 12900K, more expensive than the 11900K, although I'm sure many of you would agree that the 12900K is probably going to be more worth it than Rocket Lake. And yeah, there's also a few more notes that I'd like to get over and done with. We've discussed benchmarks billions of times already for the 12900K. Admittedly, they are not for things like games, unfortunately. But while we have, of course, done some comparisons against Zen 3, how it will stack up against, you know, the Ryzen Vcash SKUs, no one knows. AMD have released, you know, some benchmarks, very, you know, early preliminary benchmarks for those CPUs. But at the end of the day, we don't really have a good understanding of how it's going to perform against a wide range of applications. So it will be very interesting to see that. I suspect that... I'm going to call it the 6950. I don't know if it is going to be called that. For all, the, all I know, it could be called the 5951, for all we know. But yeah, I suspect that AMD will have still an advantage in certain applications, let's say Cinebench or, you know, 3D rendering over the 12900K. But I suspect Intel will be very competitive with gaming. The other thing is naturally Intel are going to be on a new platform. 
and I will be very curious to see what the prices are for the Z690 motherboards, for example, as well as DDR5 memory. In particular, one of the reasons I've been hearing that AMD did not go with PCIe Gen 5 for its AM5 motherboards was because of concerns over the cost of the motherboards. Now, whether this is going to translate to drastically increased pricing for um, Intel CPUs, well, rather, Intel's motherboards, we don't know. However, it is rather interesting to me. I'm very much looking forward to Alder Lake. I think that Alder Lake will probably be a good start for Intel getting back into at least a competitive position. But at the end of the day, until I've actually tested them, until they're in the hands of people, well, I'm going to be just cautiously optimistic. And next up, a couple of other very small pieces of news that I just want to blast through. The first is that NVIDIA have released the 510.06 driver for the Windows subsystem for Linux. And this is noteworthy for a couple of reasons. So back in June, NVIDIA basically confirmed that Kepler GPUs, such as, say, the 780 Ti and so on and so on, will basically have their support pulled. And yeah, this is happening in October. So this is the first consumer driver which basically will be launching next month. But yeah, they will be pulling the plug on the support for those older cards. But of course, cards such as Pascal, they will naturally still be supported. But another very interesting thing is that Stefan 3D from Laptop Video to Go actually has found evidence of new compilers. NV Compiler Next 64 dot dll for example now what this is actually for is still somewhat up in the air although they have speculated it could possibly be for something like say ada lovelace given the fact that nvidia themselves have referred to like ampere ampere next and ampere next next i'd also like to credit videocards.com where I actually found that bit of news. And the final thing for today, and it's to do with AMD's Instinct MI200. This is a card that I don't suspect many of you are going to have a particular uh, amount of experience with, but I'm sure many of you have heard of. So this is, of course, a GPU which is designed for compute and data centers, and it will be the CDNA2 architecture. So basically, this is kind of a branch, a uh, derivative version, if you will, of uh, AMD's Vega architecture. Yep, that's right. Vega continues to live. It's basically the Skylake of AMD. And there is a very interesting thing which has been discovered by Polarkamp's dream. It does seem that we are only going to have a grand total of 110 compute units for each of its two dies. And yep, that is of course the thing with Aldebaran because it is an MCM design. So the total number is 128 per each of the two dies. However, again, it does seem like AMD have disabled some of these simply for what I assume to be either yield purposes or possibly other reasons like power and heat or whatever else. Either way, this is going to be a ridiculously powerful card. Apparently, it's going to be coupled with 128 gigabytes of HP M2E memory, which is an awful lot of memory. Not much to say on this one because MI200 is actually confirmed already to launch the end of this year. So this is going to be a very interesting card for AMD, of course, simply for data center and compute purposes. And yeah, it could mean that both Intel and NVIDIA their product positioning could just be in all the wrong places. I'm sorry, I could not resist that. Apologies for not being on camera for this shorter video, but currently working on a big script and emailing a couple of companies for an exclusive. I don't know when the exclusive is going to be available, but uh, yeah, it should be a really cool video. I'm just kind of juggling a lot of plates at the moment. With that said, thank you very much for checking out this video. I'll see you soon. If you've enjoyed it, well, you know what to do because it's YouTube land. Take care. Bye for now.